The trade deadline is now here, and the number one guy on our trade watch list, Taylor Hall, is now a member of the Boston Bruins. The Buffalo Sabres trading him to Boston for Anders Bjork and a second-round pick. Curtis Lazar also going to Boston. That's Aaron Ward. I'm Dave Pinota. And Wardo, this is a big move, certainly, for the Boston Bruins. They get shellacked 8-1 to Washington and then add Taylor Hall a few hours later. What do you think of this move for the Bruins? Well, the first uh, thought was, oh, this is a pretty big reactionary uh, trade to be made for, for one loss. But truth be told, I mean, this is, this is Boston's MO at the trade deadline. They, they, they just maintain status quo. They're not always rumored to be the leader for a guy, and all of a sudden, here they are. I mean, you think about the fact they got Rick Nash, uh, not to bring up old wounds for myself, but uh, Jerome McGinley confirmed. I mean, these are all things where Boston is has got some bravado come trade deadline. So the acquisition of, of Hall is big. Now, the big question is, what does Cassidy do with him? Right, so he's got some serious kind of maneuvering to do. He's clearly not going to top crack the top line. Uh, I don't know if you really want to break up the Richie Krejci line. Uh, so now you look down and, and say to yourself that Coil. It makes sense that he may go to the left side with Coil, depending on how or what the level of dissatisfaction that still remains with DeBrusque over the past season, what his performance is, where they stand, what they envision for DeBrusque. So I can see that being a good fit for Coyle and Hall on this team. But again, it's up to Cassidy to figure out what his team needs. And after last night, it seems like a lot. Yeah, and you look at the Buffalo Sabres, pretty much wide open now for what they could potentially do, listing on all fronts. Linus Olmark is not going to sign an extension with the Sabres today, barring some kind of miracle, and all signs point to him looking at free agency. But the lines of communication are still open, but they have other things that they can do here, Wardo. What do you think's next for the Sabres? I think this is a yard sale, honestly. I mean, ideally, if you look at this trade deadline, they've got rid of Hall, they got rid of Montour, so the key pieces are gone now. What we haven't discussed, we haven't heard the name of, and it'd be great for the Buffalo Sabres organization is, is the parting of, of Skinner, but I don't see that happening. We don't know what the salary cap issues are for every team currently, but what we do know is there's so much uncertainty for next year, I think there's there's really a guard against a knee-jerk reaction to make a big move, and Skinner's not that, right? He hasn't produced in a very long time, and, and he's not someone that has proven much where a team can really, I guess, pin their hopes on him uh, producing. So. I think it's it's from goaltenders to D to to forwards. Anybody's available. Now you look at this, and you got to make some hard decisions too. If you're really going the route of getting rid of all kinds of players, is the consideration with Eichel and Dolan? Are these two young guys now available for the right price? I imagine there's enough teams around the National Hockey League that envision they can do better or more for these young guys because where they're at right now. They're getting almost polluted with the environment, with the losing, with the what's going on. And it's not a it's not an indictment of Buffalo. They're just in a bad situation. These young guys can bring in assets which would truly be a fresh start for the Buffalo Sabres. And basically, in my opinion, that's what they need. Yeah, we're going to see what transpires here over the next few hours leading up to the deadline. For more, check us out on the fourthperiod.com.